Hey guys, this is Woody, the Unexceptional Gamer, bringing you a dual commentary with uh, the guy that I call the god of YouTube. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I prefer the term the Tom Hanks of YouTube, to be honest. <laughs> All right. I, I guess somehow, somehow I got that, rep, that, that sort of untouchable status where, um, you know, who doesn't like Tom Hanks, right? I don't, I don't mean to sound cocky, that's just like, that's what happened. And, and, and a lot of times I find it kind of laughable, just how much... Uh, well, whatever. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, Anyways, go ahead. Then, I write, you know, poetry for the subs or or some of them. And Tom Hanks yeah. is, is going to be a big challenge for me. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so hey, I wanted to talk to you about this. Uh, Wings of Redemption posted up a game, and can, can we talk about that night? Do you, do you mind? Yeah, go. So no, that, go. For it, yeah. We we played what about twelve games roughly? Uh, I don't know if it was twelve. I think it was closer to about eight. Eight or nine? I don't. I don't know. We played a lot of games, and you, you guys, fucking just ran a steam train all over us. We did. We did pretty well. There were. I know there were two ties, and then the rest were wins. So we had, yeah. you know, somewhere between like seven and ten wins, and then two ties, and and no losses. And uh, Wings posted up one of our worst games because he didn't want to be a jerk about that. You know, he didn't want to like, you know, like he didn't grab the most lopsided game around. He grabbed one that uh, that was a little closer. And uh, I did poorly, man. I, I was running around with lightweight on a three bar, and I think I went like eight and twenty-four. And I woke up that morning to find the video posted, and I had like three hundred people telling me I sucked. And yeah, that's you know that's the thing when you start venturing into a more competitive, organized uh, gameplay. By the way, how much how much how how long is this video? How much time do we have to talk here? I'm gonna run the eleven minutes. If it runs over, well, maybe you make it too far. People want to hear you, man. Okay. Um, so what I was going to say about that is anytime that you jump from sort of like a pub star-ish status into something like a competitive scene, you run the risk. I mean, a lot of people in the YouTube community, I think, are really hesitant to compete in any form, whether that be a friendly 1v1 on shipment or a full-on game battles ladder, because they, I think a lot of them are afraid that it's going to ruin their reputation as of being a good player. But when you when you make that jump, when you jump into game battles, you really should approach it no differently than you did than, than you did pubs. So like, if, if you're feeling discouraged right now because of all that, I would just let it go, man. Like, cause it, the transition is difficult. It's a really difficult transition. I mean, it was difficult for me personally. It, it took me a long time before I got the jitters out of my system. Now if I start up a scrim or if I'm actually in a game battles match, I don't really get nervous. Um, but before, I would, my hands would literally shake a little bit. Yeah, um, I, I think on the night... My KDs were probably around even, which isn't really that great for the winning team, but that's where it was. In that yeah. game, not good. But uh, in that game, I was a, a lightweight runner. I mean, if you're a flag capper, you're not there to, to go low positive. I'm going up against guys uh, who already have like you know, cover positions, guarding the flag with stopping power. It's hard to win a lot of firefights that way. It's the numbers game. It's the, it's the fallacy of posting gameplay commentaries and I mean I'm partly responsible for it too it's like this self-imposed perfectionism where the goal really is to get games where you have really good KDs because that's what people want to watch so if after a long time of doing that capturing gameplay your gameplay suffers a bit because you're so focused on your kill death ratio that you ignore the objective of the game and if you're running the flag on CTF invasion lightweight marathon your KD is probably not going to be positive. I mean, that's fine. You don't. Your priority is not to go negative. Your priority is to make smart pulls of that flag, waiting until two people are down on the other team. You have a spot or whatever. Your kill death rate has nothing to do with it. You could. You can go seven to twenty-four and have the highest score on the team if you're pulling flags the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the the transition I'm making into competitive gaming. I'm looking forward to that. I think in that game that was posted, you know, we weren't coordinated like we could have been. You know, we could have had our slayers keeping the alleys open. Instead of uh, what we kind of did, which was just sprint there and sprint back and not get anything going. Yeah, you know what? One thing we learned from you guys is that uh, we went in. Honestly, you know what? I'll I'll be candid with you. Honestly, we went into it thinking like this isn't going to be hard. <laughs> That's a, if we're just being honest, or I was just I, I was thinking to myself, you know, we'll, we'll we'll probably do fine because I play with these guys all the time, and I know like all all the people that are on my team are totally solid players, and well, I mean we'll just wreck pubs all night, but the, in the end. 
that doesn't mean anything when you're going up against an organized team. And that theme kind of carried on throughout the night. You guys just felt like it felt like you guys had us locked down, that you guys had setups, and that we were we didn't know call outs. That's basically what I'm getting. That's a long winded thing. So actually, last last night or was it the night before we went through we went through invasion. Actually, that was last night. We went through that map invasion, and we went through the entire map, and we now have a call out for every single spot on that map. Like, even little spots, we have call outs for every single one of them. And then we played scrims internally using call outs, and it just felt, you felt 10 times more organized just knowing call outs because you can build strategies on the fly if you can communicate Absolutely. quickly. What we yeah. did is um, if you Google like MLG MW2 call outs, then uh, you'll, it, there's a thread on the Major League Forum that will probably be your first hit. And that's what we used as our starting point to learn all the call outs, to learn, you know, like, for Villa Bar, Crack House, etc. And um, and then from there, we've got one guy, Onslaught, who seems to know every call out. And uh, some of them weren't exactly the same as that thread, but we've been working on that. So yeah, we did have call outs. We could have done better in some cases by you know organizing pushes more. Like in Demolition, we did it fairly well and Capture the Flag, not as well. But that's what well, scrims are for. I, I actually felt like you guys had a much stronger Capture the Flag game than you did Demolition, because... You guys still beat us on demolition, but we were fighting. Like we put up way more of a fight on demolition than uh, than CTF. You guys were just—I mean, like the biggest problem that we had as a team when we were playing at night is that we weren't. Well, first of all, you guys were fucking killing the shit out of us. Like we couldn't even get out of spawn on scrapyard and terminal. Uh, the other thing was that we weren't pulling the flags at smart times. So if we had one straggler that was able to somehow make it all the way to your base, he would just pull the flag. And you can't do that. You have to you have to time it just right. You have to time it so that you know two of them are down. Okay, now you pull. But I he would just. I have to look at a few more of the games, but uh, and according to my foggy memory, when uh, I felt the the kill deaths across both teams were kind of competitive. You know, we might have had a slight edge, but you guys were winning gunfights too. It was just you know coordination yeah. and callouts. Uh, I mean, it all comes down to the objective. If you're not communicating with the objective in mind, then you're never going to get anything done. And we weren't, I mean, it got to a point at the end of the night where we weren't communicating, period. Uh, we just weren't talking. The mics were just totally silent. And we were just going going on what we'd normally do. But that's not going to work when you're playing an organized team. No. Yeah, and this, this is a scrim, man. It means as much as a preseason game in football, American football. Yeah. yeah nothing. You know, it's yeah, yeah. kind of sort of a feeler where you get to see where you are and what you need to improve. Uh, no, but, I'm glad uh, I'm, I'm glad my team got fucking smacked because, I mean, that got us to, I mean, that literally motivated, made it, but I can't, that motivated <laughs> us to go into, go into invasion last night and, uh, and, and get all those call outs down. And we were in a good mood having fun last night. That's the other thing when you play competitively, you still have to find a way to have fun. If you're not having fun, you're going to play like shit. For sure. Yeah. We... You know, it's easy to have fun when uh, when the games are going lopsided like that for us. We <laughs> had a good time. We had been scrimming against a couple other teams, and they're good. You know, we get our butts handed to us in TDM. And I'm like, how good are you guys? And they're like... TD TDM is fucking bullshit, Woody, I'm telling you. <laughs> just, just, just don't even play it. Just don't even play it on a competitive level. Call of Duty is not meant in a deathmatch capacity. It's just not, and it, it fails competitively. I hear, I've done a little competitive TDM, not as much as you have, and uh, I, I get what it is. I think a lot of people hate it because they don't value patience as a skill. You know, no, I, it's not even about patience. Like I don't mind patience. Patience in search and destroy. I love that tension. That's fun for me. Uh -huh. This game, not so much. I didn't. I didn't do very well this game. I was running around with a Barrett 50 cal. I think I went like one and four or one <laughs> and five. But whatever. I mean, like. Um, but TDM is on a whole other level. I mean, it has nothing to do with patience. It's all about, I mean, there are teams out there that will get one kill and then everybody goes prone in the grass until the time runs out. People literally get up and go check their email and go to the bathroom and just, they have this one spot where they know no one's going to find them. That's not competitive. That's a fucking joke. I mean, I, I'd, I'd rather seriously flick my own nutsack over and over again than, than play competitive TDM. Okay. I I would take TDM over that. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been exaggerating a little bit on that. <laughs> I think you get the point. I, I hear where you're coming from.